I'm here with Felix Zemdex. Nice to meet you, Felix. You too. Um, although we have met once at a competition, mm -hmm. and I went to the Sydney competition last year just just to spectate, uh, and you were in the competition. And uh, at the time, you did not have the Rubik's Cube world record. No. And you now have the Rubik's Cube world record. So, what was your time for the current world record? Uh, so the current world record that I set uh, was in December last year, 4.73 seconds for a single solve. And you beat the previous world record by 0.01 of a second. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I have an interview elsewhere on my channel with Matt Svolk when he set the 4.74 world record and he was sat next to you. Actually, I would, I would be the Matts in that situation. Kind when of. When you broke the record. Kind of. Kind and of. The, the funny thing about that was at the competition, so you, you win on your average solve time. Right. So even though on the last solve of the competition I got the world record, he still won the competition. He still won the competition? Yeah. yeah. On average? Yeah. But you just had one yeah. outlier fast solve. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. I bet that was of minimal consolation for him. Uh, perhaps. I think so. <laughs> okay, okay. So actually, so this, this is the scramble that you faced. Mm -hmm. when you set the world record. Do you want to talk us through how you were, how you were able to solve that in 4.73 seconds? Yes, okay, I'll, I'll do my best. So <laughs> essentially I started uh, the solve by doing a green cross. So the cross is the first step in a lot of major speed cubing methods from like the beginner's method to because I, I, be I do beginner's method. Yep. And you so do the cross I as well. always do the white cross though. Ah, okay. And uh, see, so already you're like, oh, amateur. Right? So you're color neutral, right? So you look at it and go, which one is the closest? Yeah. Or well, I look at it and try in the limited time that I have to try and figure out which one is the closest. And I must have looked around and saw mm. that the green one was quite easy. And also, in doing the green one, I, can, I planned out the first two F2L pairs after right. that. Actually, the first three. Really? Before in, in so in your inspection time, yeah. you had the green cross and the first three pairs. Yeah. So the first two layers, so if the green is your bottom layer you're gonna do first. Yeah. F2L is where you solve corner and edge pairs simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And you already had the first three sets. Yeah, or roughly. I had a rough you, you, idea you knew where of, they of where the be. pieces were. Right. So the first four moves that I did uh, essentially inserted so we had the two green pieces solved already, yep. two of them solved already, and the other two green cross pieces are there and, and up here. Yep. So my first four moves essentially inserted these two, yep. like that. Yep, so they're in. So we've go. got the cross and all we need to do is, is align it. And along with this cross we had this, uh, yeah, this got corner. correct corner. And it's correct edge it's in just, place like it's that. It's just waiting. Oh my goodness. So that was four moves. And I don't I had, want to say you got lucky with us. Yeah, so it was quite an easy scramble. Um, so those four moves set up the cross and yep. then I did one move to actually complete it, it and align the corner and the edge. So it's five moves and you get a cross and an F2L pair. That's nice. That was quite nice. Um, then I guess the next thing that I did was basically, well I think was what probably made the solve. Um, so we see here we've got this F2L pair. Yep. Which we can, these guys are already paired up, ready. This to go. guy's in, already paired up, and we can easily they insert it in, in into that yeah. pet, into that slot like that. I reckon even I could do that. But I didn't do that. No. You can do something. Oh, a little, I would have fallen for that. Yeah, exactly. So you can do something a little bit more fancy and save yourself a bit more time. So instead of what I instead of what I would normally instead do, instead of being drawn in by these guys, yeah. Um, instead of initially inserting them straight away, I did a U prime. Right. To bring these over here, so that. When I brought up this next slot, right, yep. like that, yep. it actually paired up these two right. next. So I kind of had a vague idea that uh, it, was a, it was likely that if I did that, like in my head in inspection, that this would happen. Right, so you didn't know that would definitely happen, but, but I was it pretty sure. likely. Yeah, okay. so that's what I planned to do, and if it messed up, well, worst case, I worst get, case, worst case I get the two F2L pairs. You can still chuck them in, right, yeah. okay. So I brought up that to pair these two ones up, Yep. And inserted this. Then now that's in. And then you can over rotate. Oh, okay. And insert that one into the back. On the fly, and then drop it back in. Yeah. Save yourself a twist. So those those were the first three F2L pairs, and then the rest of the solve was pretty standard. After so that. once you done, you plotted that out vaguely in your inspection time. Yeah. Once you get here, are you then just hoping that what you see? what's left is going to be pretty straightforward. Yeah, kind of. Okay. And I think it, on this last F2L pair, I like choked a little bit and had a couple of lockups and messed it up. So I think I did something like... Uh, oh, so you weren't uh, quite twisting optimal. And then I went again. Uh, you, yeah. So it could have been better is what you're trying to tell us. 
Uh, no, it's good enough. <laughs> it's good enough. The world record's good enough, it turns out. So yeah, got, like after after I did the first three pairs, I was like, okay, like trying to get myself back in the zone, like what do I do now? Yeah. Because I've already I've been concentrating so hard on like trying to get that perfect and didn't really think about what to do after that. So then I went in and yeah, did this these two pairs. I mean these two pieces into the oh, back. Right. Yep, yep, yep. And then I've just got last layer, so OLL and PLL. So you do, so you do that in two two looks and moves, or do you plan them both out? The the, the last layer. Yeah. yeah. Um, here I had a reasonably easy OLL case um, to orient this whole. So, blue so OLL, slide. you're orientating the last layer. Yep. And then PLL, you're permutating. You're moving around the last layer. Correct. Right? So, yeah. so what was your OLL? So my OLL was this nine move case. Okay. And then the PLL I had was a U permutation, which is a three cycle of edges. Right. So the last pair in the OLL and PLL were reasonably like straightforward. They're pretty, pretty middle of the road. Uh, it's easy, easy cases, but nothing tremendously, tremendously lucky. The luck right. was in the scramble. The luck and, was in the first couple of yeah, yeah, and planning out the first kind of three pairs. At what point did you realize this could be a very fast time? Uh, it happened so quickly that only when I put down the time, I was like, hey, that was, that was a good solve. Yeah, then you, that then was you look good, at, that was good. I wonder how I did. Then you look at the time and it's like, yeah. This is that bad. was a good solve. I guess in, in inspection, when I saw like, how easy it was, I was like, okay, if, well, if I it execute this well, there's, there's a chance you know, it could be a five second solve or something. And then... I think because when I saw you at the Sydney comp, you got a five point something, it was 5.2. 5.3, 5 yeah. 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 And that was amazing. I mean, that's just phenomenal times. Yeah. But under five. Something else. <laughs> so you've got the, you. So you got now. Got the. When did you first get the world record? Uh, the world record single, single. or the average Sorry. single. Two thousand end of two thousand and ten. Okay. Um, I got seven point oh three. Right. That was the original single world record that, that I had. Yeah. All right. And how many times have you had it since then? Uh, broken it. I'm trying to think. Maybe seven or eight times, but most of them most of them came in uh, two thousand eleven. Right. So probably, I think I broke it maybe five or six times in 2011 and gradually got it from the 7.03, yep. had a few sixes and then got a 5.66. So that stood from two, middle of 2011 until early 2013 when oh, Matt's, wow. Matt's broke took it, it yep. with a 5.55. And then... I remember that. Yeah. Af after that... Uh, and then you're like, right, I've got to get back on this. <laughs> after that, there was an American Colin who got a 5.25. In 2015, oh, wow. right? I think it was. I think I'm. I'm really bad at remembering. And then another Something another like American, that. Lucas, got a 4.9. Then Matt's got a 4.7. 4.7. And then I got a 4.7. And here we are today. And you now have the world record for single three by three, mm -hmm. and average three by three. Mm -hmm. But you've also brought some other cubes along. Yeah. Right. And do you have you got the record for all of these, apart uh, from the two? Not the Mega Mix either. Not the Mega Mix. Where do you rank? Uh, third. Your top ten. Third. Third. That's all right. For average. If it's all right. I think single? Fifth for single, maybe. Fifth for single. Okay, top Can't ten. Can't remember off the top of my head. And you're very dismissive about the two by two. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's too quick. It's, it's not. It's a lot. It doesn't count. It's very luck-based. Yeah, what do you, but that's very true. I guess you've got so few pieces that you can just get lucky and that's it. Yeah, so you're yeah. never going to be truly lucky on the three by three. Yeah, you, like the two by two event is very scramble dependent, whereas... The scrambles don't have a huge influence on any other cubes. Right, right, right. Because I guess you get a lot of extra combinations just going up from two. To oh yeah, it's exponentially, exponentially. Um, and you can do the maths. But all these, <laughs> and believe me, I will. Uh, and all these, so you you have the single and average for all the others, except uh, average for the four. Which one? Uh, are you except missing? except average for the four by four. Right, but the rest as of, of these you have. as of early twenty seventeen, but that. Oh, okay, could, that's true. As we're recording, yeah. uh, Felix that is That is likely to be broken in the world of speed cubing. You reckon that's... Uh, especially... Oh, especially 4x4, four four, single. You reckon... And 7x... Uh, they're all reasonably beatable. If really? If someone, someone has a good go if at it. If someone puts yeah. a lot of effort into one of these, they could take it. Yeah, like 7x7 uh, is seven up for grabs. 6x6 six is six, a little bit up for grabs. Do you strategically like practice a particular one if you think people are getting too close? Uh, I strategically practice the one where I think I can easily beat the record. Got it. <laughs> That's why you have so many, right? Because you pick another one. So you, you, are, you, are you getting ready for a Mega Minx takeover? No. So it was middle of last year where I said, okay, the Mega Minx record hasn't been beaten for a little while. All right. The average was around 43 seconds. 
and this they they came out with a new Megaminx, some new hardware. People's time started dropping, so I was like, okay, if I practice this and I get, I can a, get in on this. I can get in on this. So the record was low 43 average, 43.0. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, and I managed to get a 43.2 at a competition and wasn't able to compete. Uh, too soon after that, and by the time I got to my next comp, it was down to 37. And, uh, so, someone else had gotten uh, the yeah. easy wins. This because <laughs> I've got one on my desk in my office, which I'm, I'm not very good at, and it's so much harder to move than this one. That is, yeah, and, this, and, and hardware makes a big difference, especially for these some of the bigger puzzles as well. Like improvements in hardware can drop like five, ten seconds off someone's time, really. Um, yeah, yeah. Just because they're not struggling, I guess with these, the engineering going on inside there. So it's not locking up the same when you're doing it. Yeah, exactly. And just a more stable cube and something that turns a lot nicer it makes a bit of a difference. Now, something like the Mega Megaminx, mm -hmm. um, to be able to solve this, because I've, I've got one on my desk, and I've got everything solved apart from the last two faces, and I've just been using the normal 3x3 algorithms. Mm. Right. So for this, do you need to know a lot of extra stuff? Like, am I stuck or, or can I work it out with the same algorithms from this? Um, I think you need to have a bit of an experiment. Right. So get a solved, if you can, get a solved Megaminx. <laughs> try, and, try, and, yeah, but, try, yeah. try and do, or you can, you can flip it over and do the That's true, I've got, I've got, I've got a hemisphere solved. done. Yeah, good try point. and do some of your 3x3 three three algorithms and yeah. see how they affect the pieces around the last layer. But Mainly for the last layer in the Megamix, yep. um, I do it in four steps, which is still pretty basic. So I would just orient the edges, right. orient the corners, uh, permute the edges, and then permute, permute the, the corners. corners. Right, yeah. Um, which is what I do on the 3x3. Three three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you experiment and do some algorithms and see how they affect, for example, edge permutation yep. on, on your Megamix, then it should be reasonably straightforward. And corner permutation is not too bad because you, you can just kind of uh, take out a corner, yep. like so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Misalign the top face, and keep bumping and them around. And kind yeah. of just replace them, and then pop that back in. Yeah. So you can just, just kind of do that manually. <laughs> you're such a teacher, right? You didn't just oh, tell yeah, no, me no. the answer. You're like, well, when you get home, get your, get your cube, turn it over, work it out on the back. That's. But I'm going to do it now. I, you know, actually, I was very impressed when I saw it at the competition, because uh, you're obviously competing. But mm -hmm. yet you had a, a string of people coming up to say <laughs> hi. So you'd, there, you, you'd be there and you'd solve and do a time and then you got a gap while you're waiting for your cube to get scrambled and back. Mm -hmm. And then you say hello to a few kids and sign some Rubik's cubes and take some photos. Yeah. And then back to the competition. Yeah. And that's, I was very impressed. Oh, that's, how, that's kind of how it is. It's not yeah. like, it's, it's, it's cool in cubing that like everyone's in there together. It's yeah. not like uh, another spectator sport where you know, you're there to watch yeah. the competitors and you're kind of separate. Everyone's competing Everyone's together. Everyone's competing in the same competition. So that's cool. Everyone's mixed Even if they're, you know, best in the world, like world championships, you know, you've got all these top guys who are the best in the world who will be in heats with, you know, my dad. <laughs> yeah, your dad entered. I saw that. Oh, yeah, he's, he, so he entered good. the competition. What was his time? Uh, he gets like a minute 30, two minutes or so. Okay, I'm better than your dad. Yeah. Just. Yeah, because yeah, I went to the, when I went to the UK one, so I had a video went to the UK Rubik's Cube uh, Championship. I'm useless, right? So I average about a minute because I use a very simple, I haven't even got uh, like intuitive um, F2L or anything. And so I get about a minute. But yet they were, they were, everyone was, you know, they were a little patronizing occasionally, but for the yeah. most part, <laughs> very kind and fine. And they yeah, don't yeah. mind that. I, I was giving it a go and joining in. Yeah, and I'm sure everyone would be giving you advice and Yes, they some were. tips and stuff. I got some great tips from a 12-year-old girl yeah. who, who uh, taught me how to get better. I was like, thanks, thanks. Uh, she acted, I told her my time, and then she laughed in my face and then realized how rude that was. All right, yeah. And then um, gave, me, gave me some tips. So there you are. Right, so um, these bigger ones, Yeah. because I have a couple of these at home, but I've never, I've messed around with a 4x4. What more would I need to know if I wanted to do these more complicated ones? Is it very similar to the 3x3? Three three? From the 4x4 four four to a 5x5? Five five? Yeah. Um, I think if you can solve a... Because the there's, there's a couple of... There's a couple of... Well, there's one parity situation on a 5x5. Five five, um, right. Where well, you, you have, for example, edges two, wrong way. Two, edges, two edges swapped. Right. So you, when you're doing the 4x4 four four and you're doing... If you do reduction method, which is solve it from the inside to outside, yep. which is solving which the right centers, do. solving the edges, you basically you turn it three. into a three by three and exactly. then you solve it, right? You can so on the four by four because of because there is no like fixed center. Yeah. 
you run into situations such as OLL and PLL parity. Right. Which is where... Can you mix it up into a parity problem? Yeah. I can do both of them. Of course. All right, so what have you, what have you done here to cause a parity problem? Um, so here we've solved essentially Everything most... Everything else is done, yeah. Yeah, most of the 4x4, the four four, pretending that we're on the 3x3 three three stage. So yep. we've, we've solved our centres and we've paired up, we've our, paired up all our the edge edges. pieces. Yep. And we're doing the last layer, and we have three of our edges oriented, and one of them is, is misoriented. Which you would never get. You can never get that on a 3x3. Three three. You can yep. only have a multiple of two edges misoriented yep. you at either the same get, time. In my naive way of doing it, I either get a line or a U, and then I switch it to the cross. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Cool. But here we have three and one misoriented, which... Yeah, well that's, I wouldn't know what to do. Which it arises from the problem where we, there's no fixed centre, essentially. Um, I don't really fully understand it. I, sh <laughs> I probably should. Something, something maths. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. Um, so essentially, you just have to kind of brute force memorize an algorithm that which fixes, fixes that. that. Yeah, because right. well, you can't intuitively. There's um, no intuitive. Uh, there is if you like misalign a center like that. Uh, so if you break a center, so, something like that. Uh, it, it's something something involving breaking it, and then you have to resolve everything. But, but you just just learn. But that. you can just learn the, learn the, the algorithm. My solution is just to mix it up and try again. Yeah, I keep doing it until I don't get a parity issue. Yeah, and then I'm then I'm fine. So then, so then you go ahead, do your parity algorithm, and then you run into another problem. Oh, you put both in. Oh my goodness! All right, so now you'd never on a three by three have the two opposite edges swap. You can like, you again. You need to have a multiple of two swaps. Yeah, uh, multiple of two number of you swaps. You can never just swap two pieces. Yeah. Whereas these aren't two pieces; they're four pieces in reality. Exactly. Right, but you pair them up and pretending they're two. So again, you just you just learn. An algorithm, an algorithm that, that, that does PLL parity. So there's the OLL and the PLL parity. On when you're fixing form. that, yeah. uh, do you, could you fix it faster than I can watch? Mm. Do you break the pairs apart while you're fixing it, or do they stay together? Uh, they, they get, stay they get together. broken. They, have to they get broken. broken. Yeah. So you go. It's a pretty short algorithm. That's it, right. So that's the only reason you. The reason you can get that on the four x four is you can't. These can't split apart, obviously, because it's one piece and the three by three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's a whole new possibility. So you've got to split them apart and put them back together. Pretty much. And then the five the has five, got the five doesn't centers. Yeah. So you don't run into this OLL uh, parity PLL parity issue in the same way. Right. Of. But you could still have a parity problem where you have. Oh, right. Where, where you're so solving you're... the edges, but you, you've, you've kind of got the OLL parity issue. Right, OK, again. OK. So that's, that's the one that you can get. But uh, the way I solve it is I solve all of the edges. Like, I, I solve this first before even, oh, starting, okay. before even starting 3x3. Because, like, if you're dealing with that sort of thing during 3x3, it's a little right. bit confusing. That's annoying, right. So if you fix that first. Yeah, and then I go and do the 3x3. Then for six by six, you can run into that problem and both. And that problem. And both of the others, yeah. Right. So I get here because now you've got everything can possibly go wrong. So do you still turn this and you take the straight to a three by three and then solve? Uh, yes, but some people kind of preserve that messed up parity edge. Until the end and Until then the end. With it. Because there's a way you can be slightly more efficient about it, but. Uh, for me, it's too much thinking. For me, it's too much thinking. The distraction costs you more time than any saving. Probably not. I'm just lazy. <laughs> lazy. Yeah. yeah, as the world record holder, I don't think you're a bit lazy. Yeah. You, should, you should up your game. Um, and finally, is, is, this, is this where Rubik's Cube, like, speed cubing competition caps out at the 7x7? Seven seven? Yeah, because right. otherwise any cubes bigger than that are very broadly similar to 6 and 7. Like, 6 and 7 are similar enough that the, 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 the top guys in 7 are the top guys in 6, okay. pretty much. So if you learn one, you've pretty much got the other one. That's yeah, better. and beyond 7 by 7 takes way too long, and we only have the weekend for, exactly. for a Rubik's Cube competition. What's your record on the 7 by 7? Uh, in competition, 2 minutes 18. Okay, is that single or average? Single. Single, right. Single. And what's your kind of personal best at home? 207, I think. Oh, okay, so not, yeah. not a huge amount ahead. No. Okay, a little bit. And actually, the, so what's your personal best at home on the 3x3? Three 3.52 three? 3 for a single solve. 3.52, oh, okay, yeah. so good point, point 0.2 of a second ish. 1.2. One oh, sorry, three yeah. points, sorry. Yeah, yeah. My brain didn't even process the yeah. first digit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insane. I mean, so obviously, again, it would have been a lucky case. I think I did it maybe two years ago or so. And right. Like, it was like a pay. Oh, you've just been waiting sketch. for that to happen in a competition. 
yeah, for it to count. But you, yeah, exactly. The thing is, you only get a certain number of solves in every competition. So, so you only get how many competitions a year? Do you uh, on last few years, I've gone to about 10, 10 a year. Okay, and how many solves in a competition? Yes, normally three rounds, so fifteen. So about okay, right. So one hundred fifty attempts a year. Yeah, right. And whereas at home you're doing thousands. And thousands. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, exactly. Okay. okay. So orders of magnitude more likely to get lucky at home than in a competition. Oh um, yeah, it's just. But, but yeah. still, what do you actually? What do you reckon the world record will eventually plateau out at? Do you have a, Do you have a sense for when we're going to hit the absolute fastest? Um, for a single solve, I can't see it getting too much faster than like a low three second solve. Right. Like if if three point five is possible, like I think I've done that, and maybe a couple of others okay. have done that on a really lucky scramble. Like if it's possible at home, it's possible. It's in competition, possible in competition. For sure. Sooner or later, someone will get. But it's just yeah. very very low probability. So I imagine, it, like, I mean, it could feasibly get under three seconds, but uh, very, very low probability. Okay. So it's not like it's not like it'll, a, be, a, it'll be a freak. It's not like a hundred meter sprint where it's you're literally like bound by you know muscle, mm, yeah. everything like that. There, you, like, you can't get lucky in like a hundred meter sprint. It's hundred, like you can't get lucky in a, in a Rubik's cube. Right. So it's harder to define a limit. So if you get a hundred meter sprint, where you roll the dice to see where you start, right? Yeah, something that, like that. Yeah. And then sometimes you you know get to skip the last twenty meters. You're about to say yeah, you did the, if you give, yeah do it right, you just skip the final layer of running. Yeah, yeah. good point. Exactly. So it's harder to define like a, a strict barrier for, for something like this. Yeah, because there, there is that luck aspect to it. Yeah. And technology wise, so this is a very good speed cube, but this is one of the ones with magnets in it. Uh, yes, or nearly that, prototype that, with magnets. That, that one is yeah. Okay. And so that's so inside this there are how many magnets? I guess there's one. On each corner uh, face? I think there's... I'm not a cube hardware expert. I, I would imagine there's... Yeah, you got people for that. <laughs> there's, I think there's three in each corner and okay. two in each edge, something like that. So when they line up, they, they don't snap into place, but they, they, they like to sit in yeah. the correct spots. Yeah. yeah. And do you, reckon that is, do you reckon... Has that made a noticeable difference to your times? Or? Mm, not to my times, okay. no. It, it's just a kind of different feeling it's more of the cube. Uh, the main thing I think for me that I've noticed is it's a little bit more stable. Okay. So particularly in competitions, if you've got a cube that isn't as solid and stable, it's more you're more prone to like slipping up and errors and that sort of thing. Okay. Whereas if if you have something that's a little bit more reliable, that's especially good for competing. just makes you a bit more consistent. Yeah, I think so. Okay. But again, it's marginal, and some people don't like them. I initially couldn't stand it. Really. And then I got used to it, and then. Yeah. And now you're alright with it. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Shall we finish with you? Doing a solve on one of these cubes. Sure. What, what, what would be your favourite one? Like, what do you enjoy the most? Solving? Oh, the three by three. Three by three. For sure. Three by three. Yeah. Would you mind if I scramble the three by three? That, yeah. That, either which, one. which one would you like? Magnet or no magnet? We got no magnet. Let's it's go traditional. Let's be old school, right? And you've even got the timer. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to fire that up? I'm gonna see. I am. Um, they are. They asked if I would go on the scramble table when I was at the competition, but I can't sight read the oh, okay. uh, notation. <laughs> Um, although I do know Singmaster, so you know, I should, I should, I should learn it. Okay, anyway, it's in the man, not the notation. Okay, so I'm going to give that to you for your inspection time. Uh -huh. What colour cross are you going to go? I'm going to go with the orange. orange. I'm time. making him talk while he's doing it. This is great. Okay, go for the orange. You ready? Whatever you want. All right, what do we get? No good. 8.36 and you're disappointed. It's no good. <laughs> it's no good, no good. What went wrong? Uh, not warmed up. Not warmed up. No, that's a good point, that's a good point. You've come in cold, but still you can consistently get under 10 seconds and then be disappointed with yourself. Yep. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> Felix, it's, it's, been, it's been amazing. I will go and learn the other half of this mm. uh, and we'll reconvene once I've mastered that. Cool, so. sounds good. Great to meet you. Cheers.